Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Captain's Table. I'm your host, Captain Beanard, and topic of discussion today is going to be an overview and draft analysis for the NGDL4. And here to discuss that with me, returning to the Captain's Table for the second time, I have a fellow draft league participant and actually the winner of the inaugural season of this draft league, Fat Jesus. Welcome back. Hello, how's it going, guys? It's been a while. Yes, yes, it has since the uh, the last uh, draft league uh, video, I believe. So, um, basically, what we're going to do here is we're going to talk a little <coughs> bit about the um, draft league itself, uh, the NGDL4, which is of course a uh, draft league run by the Killer Nacho. Um, and then we're going to talk about both of our drafts uh, being participants. And uh, luckily, we actually are not scheduled to face each other at all throughout the course of this. So uh, there's no harm in. Uh, giving away uh, secrets or blowing strategies or anything like that. <laughs> um, and then uh, I th believe the only way we would face each other is actually um, if we both made it to the finals. Yes, that, that would be the only way. So um, is, is this foreshadowing? Is this a preview of things to come? I don't know. Probably not, but <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. So you have anything you want to add? I mean, other than hoping to see you in the finals and uh, good luck and uh, win as many as you can. Yeah, you too, buddy. Absolutely, that would be that would be quite ep the epic turn of events if it were to happen. So, um, but we are going to get started then um, talking about the NGDL4. So, um, as I mentioned, uh, draft league run by the killer Nacho. Um, this draft league is actually kind of interesting for a couple of reasons. There's a couple of things that uh, set it apart from other draft leagues. Um, but uh, for those of you unfamiliar, uh, kind of the general uh, idea of a draft league is it's basically a tournament where you uh, draft your team um, and then you play a Swiss style tournament against uh, a number of other players. And uh, after so many rounds, they do a top cut. Uh, in this case, top eight are going to be the finalists. So um, two things that actually uh, separate uh, the Killer Nachos draft league from other draft leagues. Um, Number one, Ubers are actually legal, um, which is not very common in draft league format, um, which actually will come into play talking about our drafts a little bit later. But yes, Ubers are allowed, um, which is kind of interesting, but um, you know, also uh, kind of makes it unique. Um, I kind of waffle back and forth whether or not I think that's a good idea or not, but um, you know, it kind of is what it is and just got to roll with it, I guess. Um, second thing is uh, there are actually... Um, in this draft league, uh, as there, it's actually a money-based draft as opposed to um, most draft leagues are actually just a tier-based draft where you get um, a certain you know number of Pokemon from each tier to use. Um, in this draft league, you actually have a spending cap, which in our case is $130. Every Pokemon is subscribed um, a dollar amount based on tier, usually with some notable exceptions because Nacho likes to you know change things up a bit, I guess you would say, <laughs> um, but that's all good. Um, and then basically you're allowed to uh, buy, you know, Pokemon. Uh, oh, shout out to uh, Ditto for full ham, you know, for that price change. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I had to throw that out there, sorry. Um, but anyway, um, so you buy your team essentially and um, then do it that way. So um, it's kind of an interesting... Um, set up i think um i know you have you been in i think you've been in every season of this haven't you or was there one you were not in uh i have been in every single one uh the first one i inherited the second one i joined on my own terms and the third one i inherited again and then this and one this you is drafted. the fourth time i've been in it yes yeah you drafted your own team this time so yes, yes. you are always around so that is that is a good thing so you're very familiar with uh with this uh, environment, I guess you would say, and uh, it's an interesting More or less, you can say, yeah. More or less. Yeah. Um, these I are the only tournaments I've... These are the only tournaments I have actually have been in, so, I mean, I they? guess you can say, but not really, so... So you're, yeah, so you're kind of familiar with these draft leagues, but you're not generally familiar with draft league? 
Like, yeah, if that makes any sense. I think it does, yeah, because I actually, um, I believe I mentioned this before, but um, the last season of this draft league was actually the first draft league I ever joined, um, and uh, it kind of didn't go as well as I had expected, um, so I'm kind of looking for some redemption this time around, um, you know, and uh, th- and this <laughs> is actually my only second draft league I've ever joined, so... Um, We'll see what happens. Well, but. well, how does it feel to be power ranked number one in your division, though? I could ask you the same thing, but uh, I think it, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that definitely. But um, for sure, I think we will go over our drafts next. So let mm-hmm. me just do <sighs> this one second. Get rid of that and. There we go. So, uh, since you are my guest, we'll start with you. Um, your team is, in fact, the Carolina Mamo Swines with a Z, because you are Fat Jesus with a Z. I don't think Nacho yes, picked correct. up on that in his uh, Power Rankings video. He didn't get the connection there, but that's all good. So, um, we have your team up on the screen now, the uh, Carolina Mamo Swines. Um in actually the green division of this uh, tournament. And um, we'll go through uh, Pokemon by Pokemon, just kind of take a look at it. And uh, if you want to tell me your thought process behind, uh, you know, drafting the team and, uh, you know, how you feel about the team, I will throw my feedback as well. Uh, So we'll start at the top there. Uh, The very first pick you made was the Mega Beedrill. And um, interesting Pokemon. Actually, uh, the one thing I forgot to mention, another little uniqueness about this uh, draft league is that um, you actually, they actually have an auction round um, as round one of the draft. So you get to nominate a Pokemon for auction and you place the initial bid on it with a minimum bid of $30. Um, If your Pokemon happens to cost less than that based on tier, sucks to be you. Um, You know, that's (laughs) the rule that we kind of uh, leaned on Nacho to change, but he wasn't budging. But in any event, um, so yeah, so um, you do that and then uh, everybody gets an opportunity to uh, outbid you for that Pokemon, but you of course get the final say, so if you want to outbid their outbid, then you can take the Pokemon back and own it. So uh, that is kind of what happened to you here with your number one pick, Mega Beedrill. You threw it up. Uh, normally it is a uh, UU tier Pokemon, uh, which in this draft league would cost $20, but um, because of that rule, you had to bid a minimum of 30 on it which you did. Um, somebody, actually Nacho himself, I believe it was, um, actually put a bid in for 31 on it because he wanted to snag it, and then you overruled him uh, at 32 to grab it back. So um, I do like this Pokemon, uh, Mega Beedrill, a lot, and uh, it is technically an overpayment uh, for Mega Beedrill, but I think this is one of those situations where it's kind of worth it because Mega Beedrill is such a fast, hard-hitting Pokemon that it is... Uh, really invaluable to teams, or at least can be. Um, I believe you would probably agree with that since you nominated it and took it. <laughs> so. Yeah, so uh, regarding that, I, I feel, in my opinion, Mega B Drill is, in my opinion, good enough to be an OU for that price, at least, for $30. It, it hits hard, like you said, and it's also fast, and as well with a couple of my other Pokemon that I will explain pairs with it as well makes it even a better of a uh, attacker if I'm battling other people that are more like have faster Pokemon and whatnot. Right. And yeah. like kind of set up with it too. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you there 100%. And uh, Mega Beedrill is one of those Pokemon that it feels like it should be OU, but it's not. So so you definitely don't mind paying that much for it to get it on your team in a draft. So um, moving along, then uh, you chose to grab uh, Galvantula second. I believe that was probably for uh, Sticky Web support. Yes, sir. Sticky Web, kind of a last ditch attack. Sticky Web, Bug Buzz, whatever. Volt Switch, kind of get other quick, use it as a Sackmon. Yeah, it's a good good Pokemon. Um, I do like it a lot. I was actually thinking about uh, grabbing Galvantula myself, but um, I didn't want to take it second because I had other priorities, which I will talk about when we get to my draft. But I had a feeling I wasn't going to be able to get it if I didn't take it second. But, nah, what are you going to do? Um, but uh, you actually uh, went ahead and grabbed uh, Gastrodon next, which is, I believe, uh, one of your favorite Pokemon. If not the, yes. Um it kind of took a late blossom, but yes, probably my favorite Pokemon. <clears throat> nice, nice. And it is a great Pokemon, too, honestly. And as you can see, since it's 
uh, PU tier. It only costs one dollar um, to draft it, and um, actually a Pokemon um, that I was uh, heavily considering drafting a little bit later, but uh, it didn't last long enough for me to grab it. Um, but just a really great Pokemon. It's uh, what they would call a value pick um, because it's just um, incredibly good for what it costs to draft it to your team. Um, but yeah, great Pokemon. Um, you know, trying to patch up some of those uh, weaknesses that uh, Beedrill and uh, Galvantula have. Uh, then you went ahead and grabbed the uh, Kingdra, which uh, at first I didn't really get why, but then with your next pick, the Pelipper, I instantly got why. So, <laughs> yeah, some people probably thought it was kind of weird. Like, why not pick Pelipper first? But then it's like not trying to really give it out just yet. But then, yeah, the next pick, I chose Pelipper. So I mean, didn't really go that long, but you know, yeah. it's a it's a good Pokemon for Drizzle and. Absolutely, that uh, sort of Swim Kingdra is uh, no me. joke, not at all. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I do get your kind of logic here, because I try to do this in my draft as well. Um, you get to a point in the draft, especially toward the middle of the draft, where people are um, trying to get to the better lower tier Pokemon, and uh, a lot of them can't afford the higher tier Pokemon at that point anymore. So actually waiting on a Pokemon like uh, Pelipper is actually a pretty good strategy, in my opinion, because um, it would be more likely um, at that point in the draft, probably more likely that someone would draft Kingdra out from under you than Pelipper. Um, so, and I actually implemented, you know, that in a couple of the picks that I made in my draft as well. Um, you know, trying to draft Pokemon that I thought people would pick, you know, if I didn't draft it like right away, um, that someone was going to grab it before I could get to it again. So, um, I feel like, I feel like, I'm sorry to cut you off, no, but I good. feel like, I feel like one of the, like this type of tournament, these type of picking, you gotta be kind of hit or miss or careful. Because if you give out too much information of what you're going to do as far as team building, you get sniped. So you got to be careful with that too, Absolutely. and kind of have and have backups too, just in case. Yeah, and actually that was something that uh, kind of hit me a little bit later in the draft. Um, I don't know if anyone was trying to snipe me purposefully or you know if it just happened that way but um you know you're you're 100 right that is a uh, an unwritten factor of these uh, draft leagues is that you're able to see what everyone else is drafting so um you can counter team them which um i did i don't know if you did this or not but i um i tried to counter team everybody in my division heavily with my picks um and i also um i didn't try to snipe anybody um you know per se like if i saw that they were going for um you know something or other i didn't really try to snipe out from under them but um you know i always kept an eye on what they were doing um in that regard so i don't know if you did any of that stuff yourself but not really no i was going more so get out of my comfort zone and use something i'm not used to so like i'm not used to really like let's say water like rain team so i figured why not give it a shot nice. give give it a chance and see if i like it you know something i'm right. not used to yeah no and that's that makes perfect sense to me i mean it's that's that's the cool thing about draft league honestly is it gives you an opportunity to use stuff that you normally wouldn't use which is something that um again i will you know also talk about when i hit on uh, my team um which is interesting for one very particular reason um but yeah, so um, you know, moving along in your draft, then we go down to the lower half, and uh, you went ahead and grabbed uh, Cobalion, which is a Pokemon that I really like, and uh, you know, definitely patches uh, some holes that you were seeing, starting to see in your team. Um, you know, solid pick uh, there, definitely in the uh, Porygon two as well. Um, just a really it's funny. It's funny, too. I almost actually went for the Terrakion, but I didn't really want to go against myself. I'm using my the team and have someone using, like, a water type and just screw me over. Yeah. So I figured you use Cobalion and use the water to my factor in my favor. Yeah, the, you got to be careful. Uh, that's the one thing about weather um, in Pokemon, which is one of the reasons I think that it's kind of... Um, I don't want to say fallen out of favor, but why you maybe don't see uh, weather as much anymore in uh, Pokemon is that um, you really, um, you know, it can be used against you. Let's put it that way. It can definitely be used against you, and you got to be careful of that. Um, but yeah, um, you know, uh, it, it makes sense. Um, Cobalion makes sense. Um, Porygon 2 makes sense to me also. Um, 
you know, just a just a really versatile defensive Pokemon. Um, and then Yen Mega for some speed and uh, hard hitting. Uh, you know, power. Although um, at this point, I was kind of questioning why you wanted to grab another <clears throat> bug type since you already had two. You know, I kind of needed something that kind of hit on the special side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I already had a couple of them, but I felt like I also needed a speed creep too, because the only really speedy Pokemon I have is the Mega Beedrill and Manetric. Mm-hmm. And uh, Man- uh, Manetric, sorry. But even then, it's kind of I need that little bit faster just in case. Oh yeah, no, I, I gotta I be careful of, there. of of the scarfers too. Yeah, so it's gotta be. Uh, it's just caution, kind of late picks. Didn't really have what else. Didn't know what else to pick. Yeah, that well, was so. uh, that was what I was gonna say when I got into your last couple picks in the uh, the Houndoom and the Manetric, both base form, neither Mega. Um, in my personal opinion, I those are two Pokemon that. I would not use without the Mega, uh, personally, because I don't think they're worth it. But um, you made a great point when you said when you get toward the end of the draft in a situation like this, uh, it gets to be slim pickings for sure. Um, and um, you really, I mean, uh, I know the Houndoom looks kind of random, which is kind of is, but the Manetric more so kind of... The Manetric is kind of like a last-ditch effort for a electric immunity, because I was going to go for the Electivire, but I got sniped literally two <laughs> picks prior to me. Yeah, I was going to say, I, so, I saw I that. Mean, that was a Pokemon that I was actually the Electivire, because actually Electivire is one of my personal favorites, um, so it was something that I was considering grabbing in that final round, but as you'll see when we get into my draft, I went a different road, but... Um, but yeah, um, I get that wanting the electric immunity 100%. Um, and, uh, you know, so overall, I would have to say, um, I do like your team. I think that it is good, um, is very solid. Um, I do have a couple of criticisms, like, um, you do have quite a lot of, uh, rock weaknesses on the team and, um, not a whole lot of ways to mitigate that. Um, but I think that's something you can play around because obviously I, you have, I believe five rock weaknesses on the team and only two, um, resistances, but that is something you mm-hmm. can partially play around because uh, you're not going to be bringing all those weaknesses of the same week, obviously. Um, so something that you can kind of play around. Um, other than that, I like the team a lot. Um, you know, you just have to be careful of the uh, the stealth rock will eat you alive if you don't get rid of it if it comes up. Um, but yeah, I like your I like your team. I do. Um, you have anything else? Yeah, that's so do I. I hope it do- I hope it goes well for me. I hope it gets me far uh, last year i didn't do so well so i'm hoping for a redemption myself like you so nice hoping for the best absolutely very nice so um yeah i think that about uh wraps up your team so then we are going to go ahead and take a look at mine and there it is. The Philadelphia Pidgeys are back uh, for the NGDL4. And um, there is the squad. As you can see, there is something uh, a little bit different about it this time around. And uh, it is sticking out like a sore thumb in the upper left-hand corner. And that, of course, is my very first draft pick this season is none other than Xerneas, the version mascot for Pokemon X, Legendary, Uber, Fairy type. Uh, $70 investment in that. Um, so I actually um, have a little story to tell if you're ready about Xerneas. I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> so um, basically... My question is... Go ahead. I'm sorry. My question is, why did you pick Xerneas? Yes, and I'm glad you asked because I am ready to answer that question. So um, in the draft... Um, before we were even uh, randomly assigned an order um, in the draft, uh, I had two game plans in my mind. Uh, if I was in a spot that I liked, like higher up on the draft board, then I was going to just draft an OU or whatever and just build my team like that. If I wound up lower on the draft order, I was going to draft an Uber to try and increase my position in the order because um, the way that uh, another thing that I forgot to mention is um, you actually have the opportunity or the chance to influence your position in the draft for the rest of the draft based on what happens in that first auction round. So the people who spend the most money in the initial auction get pushed to the top of the draft board and the people who spend the least get pushed to the bottom. So um, I actually in the random 
uh, positioning that we start round one with, I was actually, I believe, third from the bottom of the draft board. And I did not like that at all. So I wanted to draft an Uber so that I could increase my standings on the draft board so that I would have more picks, more options um, later on for the for pretty much the remainder of the draft. Now, um, I decided to grab Xerneas specifically as an Uber um, based on the fact that it is a great answer to, or at the time it was a great answer to all of the Pokemon that all of the people in my division, the blue division, chose at that point. Every single Pokemon or first round pick that everyone else in my division uh, had picked, they all had one thing in common. They are all weak to fairy. So you take those two things together. I need an Uber and I need a fairy. Boom. Xerneas. Put them all together. <laughs> yes, if you add up those, one plus one equals two, and there's <laughs> Xerneas. Um, Xerneas, honestly, is a Pokemon that I have never used before um, because I don't play Ubers. Um, it's a Pokemon that I've always liked and uh, was intrigued by, um, but something that I've never got the chance to use before, so I decided, you know what, the time is now, and um, you know I am going to take this opportunity because, like I said, the... the um, Increasing my position in the draft order and counter-teaming were the two factors that led me to drafting uh, Xerneas round one. So um, I am really excited to give this guy uh, a whirl and see what it can do. Um, one thing I do want to mention, uh, as per one of the uh, rules that uh, the Killer Nacho has set forth, is that uh, Geomancy, the move, is actually ban uh, from this league, meaning that uh, basically Xerneas' most broken uh, strategy is not allowed. So... Um, but that's yeah, that okay. was my next point. Yes. I was going to bring that up myself, actually. Yeah, because uh, that was one thing that did suck that he was uh, saying, yeah, it basically can't do that, which is basically it's one only niche yeah, to it's, do. It's, so, I mean... Yeah, Xerneas is... Uh, don't so get me wrong. Uh, that's... I mean, I knew that. Just to just be clear about this, I knew about that before I chose to draft Xerneas because that was made okay. clear in the rules uh, prior to the draft. That was made clear is that uh, Geomancy was banned, so I could not use what is Xerneas' most potent set, which is, for those of you who don't know, if you don't play Ubers, it's a Geomancy uh, power herb, and then you get ridiculous stat boost and you just kill everything with Xerneas because that's what it does. But, um, you know, that is not allowed. So um, I made this decision full well knowing that. Like I said, I wanted to go higher on the draft order and I needed a fairy. So an Uber and a fairy, Xerneas. <laughs> that, is, that is my, uh, you know, count and counter teaming, you know. Um, those are my uh, reasonings behind choosing uh, Xerneas. This is actually a powerhouse Pokemon, very versatile, can be either uh, physical or special, uh, you know, fast or defensive. Um, so, I, you know, in researching Xerneas uh, prior to making this decision, I was actually kind of uh, surprised about how versatile its stats are, because I never really looked into it too much before. Um, but his stats are very versatile and uh, very strong. Move pool is pretty nice too, actually. Um, it doesn't uh, have the greatest move pool in the world, but it does have a very solid move pool. And so um, I did not actually know that. Actually, I did not know it can be versatile because I always saw just the wider geomancy set. Yeah, that's I never looked into it myself. So it's nice to know. Actually, I might give it a roll one of these days. Yeah, it's a really cool Pokemon, honestly. And uh, like I said, I'm I'm excited to use it because th again, that's the thing about Draft League is uh, you get the opportunity to use something that you never have before and. Uh, like I said, being someone who never plays the Uber tier, I never get the opportunity to use a Xerneas, so I'm uh, really excited to use it and see what happens. But I think I've talked enough about Xerneas. Uh, I don't want to leave the rest of my team hanging, so uh, I'm going to start uh, going through the rest of my team then. Um, so my number two pick there, you can see, is Gudra. Actually, uh, was also my number two pick uh, last season, and one of three... Uh, Pokemon that I have uh, brought back to the Pidgeys uh, for this season, and uh, Gudra is just an incredible Pokemon. It's one of my personal favorites, uh, one of the most specially defensive Pokemon in the game. Um, it's it's just a great Pokemon, um, and then uh, I teamed it up with uh, another uh, returning Pidgey from last season, that is Mega Agron. Again, personal favorite of mine. 
one of the most physically defensive Pokemon in the game. Uh, just an incredible Pokemon, extremely underrated in my opinion. Um, and uh, there you have it in my first three picks. We have the fabled Fairy Dragon Steel Core, which is uh, one of the strongest defensive cores in uh, Pokemon. So um, that is what I was aiming for. Actually, um, so interesting side note, um, my initial plan was actually not to uh, bring Agron back to the team. I was th looking at another Steel type, a couple other Steel types actually, but they ended up uh, getting taken and um, before they got to me and then uh, I was thinking about it and the more I thought about it because I wanted to I wanted to try different things like you said earlier I did want to try different things and I didn't want to make the team too much the mm -hmm. same as it was last season but you know the more I thought about it, the more I was just you know what this is just a no-brainer to me like I, I need to stop denying the obvious and just bring Agron back and I'm very happy um, with especially my first three picks I'm incredibly happy with the synergy that's there um, I don't know if you care to comment on any of that um, I actually like the Gudra Mega Agron combo because it kind of pairs together, kind of sort of uh, covers each other's weaknesses. Yes. And also helps the Xerneas too, which is also kind of cool, which is never really thought about, which I kind of did not till now, but that core alone looks pretty good in itself. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with it. And those are actually, um, I have to give a little shout out to myself. <laughs> Uh, sorry. Shameless plug. Yeah, I have to, but um, but in my very when I started YouTubing back in um ORAS uh, several years ago, um, my very first team that I made to YouTube with Gudra and Mega Agron. So <laughs> it goes uh, it goes way back <laughs> for me, honestly. Those like I said, these are two personal favorites for me. I feel like they work so well together. Um, and you know, you have, like I said, Pokemon that can take any special hit Pokemon that can take any physical hit dragon, steel, mega, you know, it's just, it, it just works. And, and I really, really enjoy the combination. So, um, and I, I definitely am glad that I brought that back, um, from last season. So, um, it's awesome. Uh, moving along, uh, next pick we have, uh, Incineroar, um, a Pokemon that I actually really wanted to get last season in the draft league, but uh, was not able to get because somebody grabbed it uh, right before I, I was able to get to it. So um, I definitely wanted to bring it back this time. Incineroar is just an incredible Pokemon, one that you would call another, you know, value pick, um, having to spend only $5 on it and, you know, being an intimidator and, uh, you know, defensive typing, incredible move pool, uh, just an awesome Pokemon. Again, a Pokemon I do really like. Um, but um, just a great Pokemon. And then uh, pairing that up with the Jellicent as my fifth pick um, was something else. Again, uh, I'm just trying to choose Pokemon that, comp that complement each other very well. Um, and I think I'm doing a pretty good job of that. <laughs> um, so I, if you would agree, I would, you would probably agree, I would think. A, a lot better than I did, that's for sure, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Kind of, but, but, uh, yes. Well, eh. yes. I mean, I, oh, like a, a lot better than me. I mean, I didn't really put, I didn't really put it together till it was too late. So, well, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, I, I, th I definitely think I, I had, let me, okay, let me just say this. I had a game plan going into this draft and I, I'm not going to lie to you. I spent way more time than I thought I was going to and way more time than I care to admit deciding what I drafted and psychoanalyzing what I drafted and trying to make everything fit together as perfectly as I possibly could. And just about every pick until we get to the end of the draft, because, you know, at the, at the end of the draft, things are going to go sideways because it's slim pickings. But um, mm -hmm. you know, for the first portion of the draft and into the, you know, like up until like the seventh or eighth pick, like I put so much thought into all of these Pokemon and drafting them. So, um, Jellicent uh, is, you know, as Incineroar is, just great typing and um, very versatile. Uh, then we go to the next pick I grabbed, which was uh, Hitmonlee, actually the third uh, of three Pokemon that I brought back to the team from last season. Um, something that I wanted. I'm glad nobody grabbed it out from under me. Um, again, another personal favorite of mine, a Pokemon that is fast and hard hitting. Um, just a just a great Pokemon. Um, went with the Cresselia next for uh, more defensive uh, prowess. Cresselia is just just a tank. Like there's there's no two ways about it. It is an absolute tank. Um, and uh, it's. And I also feel I also feel like ten dollar the ten dollar cap on it was pretty good too for Cresselia too for being how bulky it is. 
Oh yeah, good, absolutely. Good price for it. Yes. Uh, oh, that's the other thing I wanted to mention about the Jellison. It was also a very nice price. I don't know if I mentioned it. I don't think I did, but um, I don't but, believe so. But, but for a nice water ghost, not that bad. Yeah, the only water ghost actually in the game, and for <laughs> for one dollar, you know, that's that's some nice value right there. Um, yeah, I agree with you 100 percent on the Cresselia. Um, it's great. It's value for that price, I believe. Um, another value, um, moving into my next pick, I believe, for that price is also Pinsir, actually. Uh, Non-Mega, just base Pinsir, but uh, Pinsir is a powerhouse, and I think, I, to be honest with you, I don't get how Pinsir is untiered. I really don't, because it is moxie. It is a powerhouse. It is an absolute powerhouse, and I don't get why more people don't use it. It also does... Go for it. It also depends on the set, too. A good scarf set can actually clean up house, too, toward the late game sweep. Absolutely. And I used um, all, all of these Pokemon, aside from the uh, the Xerneas and the last one on the team, which I'll get to in a second, um, are Pokemon that I am pretty familiar with because I've used, um, for those of you who know my channel, you'll know that I have used um, on the channel in Wi-Fi battles. Um, but yeah, I know the power of Pinsir, which is why I went to pick it. I actually used a Moxie scarf set um when I used Pinsir on one of my teams a while back and it was just, it was just a powerhouse. Like you get teams in the position that you want them in. They might not even see it coming and then boom, you know, there's Pinsir and it just cleans teams up. So it's, it's a great Pokemon. I, like I said, I don't know, you know, there's a lot of Pokemon like, you know, you know, even Gudra going back to that. I don't get how in, in the Pokemon metagame has, has changed so much over the years. I don't get how Gudra is only RU, you know, I don't get how Pinsir's like untiered, you know, I just, I guess, I guess that just speaks to the over-centralization of the meta in Pokemon. Um, funny thing, funny thing is, I don't know too much about the meta since I really played much since RS myself. I mean, I used to play a lot. For the tournaments back in Sun and Moon, but even then, that's all I really played. Okay. So I'm not too good at the meta for the time being, so that's another thing. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, the in the OU meta is kind of just over centralized with Tapus and Landorus and Greninja, and yeah, I don't want to talk about it. Anyway, um, what? yeah. So um, then we go into the end of the team here. Um, I grabbed uh, Caracosta, which is another underrated Pokemon in my opinion. Uh, not the best Pokemon in the world, but um, for a buck, you know, again, pickings are slim at the end of these drafts, as we both know, um, so it's it's a nice Pokemon. There was actually a couple other Pokemon I was looking at that um, they all got ripped away from me, um, so I couldn't grab anything else, but um, now we get to the final pick, which is Emolga, which is the only other Pokemon that I have never used on this team, and there's a bit of an interesting story behind me picking this guy. So, um, for the last several rounds in the draft, I wanted a, a ground type because I needed an electric immunity on the team. Cause it, cause the last, I want to say maybe three or four picks on my team, they were just trying to patch like holes that I had and give my team some versatility, um, you know, patch mm -hmm. defensive holes in my team. And the one thing I really wanted was something that was immune to electric and I couldn't get a ground type because they were all gone. Every single one that I wanted was gone. Um, and I was looking, I, I'm not going to lie to you, I spent a lot of time thinking about this Pokemon and thinking about, you know, what I wanted that last pick to be. And I grabbed a Molga because, you know what, electric immunity, ground immunity, it might be frail, it is fast, um, and it might not be strong either, but it is fast. Doesn't um, it get Nazi plot? Or am I... Incorrect about it that. Might, I, I feel actually, like it's an plot. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I know it. Uh, I already kind of have my set picked out, or at least my opening set for it. For if you know, if I use it, I should say, because um, let's be honest, the last few Pokemon in the draft usually don't come very often, um, at least in my mm -hmm. experience. Um, but yeah, I do, I'm not sure if it does or not. But it is definitely it, the main reason I made this pick, and this was. Believe it or not, this was one of the picks that I thought about m the most in this draft was this Emolga pick at the end. Uh, and it might seem <laughs> funny, but, um, you know, I, I think that uh, it, it having the ground and electric immunities and having some other resistances that are that are kind of key to patching holes in my team um, make it an interesting and a good final pick. So I'm actually interested, you know, if I do bring it at any point to see what it can do, um, having never used it before. 
Um, but that was the big thing, you know, overall looking at my draft as a whole, I'm actually very happy with the way that this draft turned out happier than I was with my draft last season by a considerable amount. And, um, the one thing that I strived for, um, on this team more than anything was balance, was balance typing, um, you know, covering all the weaknesses, patching all the holes, not having too much of one thing or too much of the other thing. I think I did a nice job doing that. I don't know about you, but I think I did a nice job. No, with that. no, yeah. As far as your team goes and all that, I feel like if you know how to work around it mm-hmm. and all that, it'd be a good team to win with. I, I see potential in it. I really do. Well, thank you. I, I do as well, um, and I am very excited to uh, start using it um, in the draft league, which actually starts uh, later this week. Um, for those of you who are interested, um, that is probably going to be uh, the majority, uh, if not all the battles that you guys are going to be seeing out of me for the next couple of months, um, much as it was the last time that I entered uh, the draft league. So um, this is the team starting off. Obviously, I do have a little bit of cap room to transact if I want to uh, you know, trade a couple of these Pokemon away. But overall, I am happy with this team. I think that it definitely can go places. Um, I just have to play my cards right Um So uh, the last thing I want to mention is uh, the Killer Nacho actually did uh, recently his uh, preseason power rankings for the Draft League. Um, We touched on it a little bit earlier, uh, telling us all which teams he thought were the best in each division. And actually, uh, to my surprise, both uh, yourself and myself uh, turned out to be the uh, his actually top picks in our respective divisions uh, as having the best drafts. So. Um, I don't know about you, but I was actually pretty surprised. You know, I for what I thought my team wasn't all that well, but cause it, I mean, I did, but then it's just I didn't think it would be number one in, our, in my division at least. Yeah, I mean, I, I I didn't see it going all too well. Yeah, I felt the towards same the way, end because because yeah. I saw like you, like when you brought up the. Um, uh, the rock weakness, it, it kind of brought up to my attention, like, yeah, I really don't have a whole lot of things for that, so I gotta be more careful. Definitely, yeah, and I agree with you there. I mean, I thought I had a good draft. Um, I didn't think it was, net, or I wasn't sure that it was good enough to be, you know, ranked number one, um, but I do appreciate the vote of confidence, as I'm sure you do as well, Um and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, giving it a shot and uh, seeing what happens with it, as I'm sure you are as well. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I, I hope for the best for both of us. Me too, buddy. Me too. So, um, but yeah, I think that about wraps things up. I don't know if you have any closing uh, comments you want to make um, as far as the your draft, my draft, um, the NG deal for anything in general, as far as the draft leak goes. I'm um, looking forward to it again. Uh, like I said before, looking for some redemption this season after uh, a subpar showing to say the least uh, last time around. Granted, I think, um, you know, I can, you know, I can, make a little bit of an excuse for myself and say it was my first draft league. I had a rough schedule X, Y, and Z mm-hmm. but at the end of the day. And that, and that stuff is true. But at the end of the day um, that I'm still looking for uh, redemption this time around. And uh, I think this might be the team to do it, but we'll see. Well, so do I. <laughs> you have anything else you want to add? Not that I know of. I hope not. Well, I don't hope not, but I don't. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Well, I think that will about do it for us. Uh, be sure to stay tuned. As I mentioned before, um, coming up uh, starting later this week, we are. I am going to be um, putting up uh, the Draft League battles, and we're going to see what happens. So um, – Thanks for watching again, everybody. Hope you all enjoyed. Please hit that like button, leave a comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy. And stay tuned for more new videos in the future. I want to thank uh, Fat Jesus for joining me uh, once again to uh, discuss the NGDL and the uh, drafts. Glad to be here. Yes, glad to have you, buddy. So um, that's it, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>